Hello and welcome to the Audio Time Capsule, episode 25. I'm comedian Simon Kane, and for those of you new to the show, this is the podcast where I invite on a guest, get them to leave 20 questions, and then a year later invite them back on to answer them. I then edit it so they're talking to their past self. All past voices will sound like this. And all future voices will sound like this. In this episode, comedian and ghost seeker Barry Dodds talks about his life and how it has changed in the last year, how the butterfly effect has changed his outlook on life, and why he feels bad for shooting an injured man in Red Dead Redemption. This was a surprisingly reflective interview that really got into Barry's mind and showed off his sweet and sensitive side. I massively enjoyed putting it together and I really hope you enjoy it as well. If you're new here, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you're old here, please do consider giving us an honest, ideally positive review in iTunes. And either way, please do consider joining the Facebook group. It's called The Audio Time Capsule and it's on Facebook, obviously. But for now, without any more delays, let's open The Audio Time Capsule of Barry Dodds. Hi, it's Barry Dodds. It's the 11th of the 11th, 17. I'm sat in the basement of a pub in Nottingham. I'm going to be doing a show there shortly with Ian Boldsworth. And I'm about to ask future me um, some questions. Uh, It's quite odd because part of me always wonders whether I'll be alive in a year's time or not. Um, So if I hear this again... Like, well done, future me. You've probably given up the fags that you won't have. I know you won't have. Um, yeah. If you've made it this far, well done. Well done, Barry. Hi, I'm Barry Dodds. It's Sunday, the 11th of November, 2018. I'm currently sat in my back bedroom of my house um, where I do all my work in my little office and I'm getting ready to listen to... Uh, me from a year ago, so that's um, yeah. I don't know. It's weird. I'm 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 looking forward to to hearing it because I honestly can't remember what I asked myself. So here we go. So, how have things gone with the Parapod film? Has it been what you expected? Are you happy about it? Is it um, has it been a success? Did Did you finish it? Um, yeah. How's that gone? Right. Oh, first of all, you're a fucking whiny little prick by the sound of you. <laughs> Am I allowed to swear? Um, but yeah, God, God, Barry, you sound like a whiny little prick. The Parapod movie, it's not finished. It's not done. It's it's still been um, sort of edited and worked on and the, getting all the bits of the jigsaw put together. Uh, I saw like an early version of it of what had been put together and and it was okay but obviously it needed work and now it's getting more work done and apparently there's a version of it that's brilliant um but i, I we still need to go and record some more of it so unfortunately that that's just still in limbo that's um yeah it's i, I hope it's all right fingers crossed <laughs> i do yeah i i it's different to what i thought it would be but i don't know I don't know sort of what the film is because it's in terms of what I wanted it to be I don't know what I wanted it to be I don't know what I want the podcast to be I just sort of turned up and just talked and then then it came out then I listened to it and see what the edit was like on it and then never heard or thought about it again but yeah I think I think it's I think it's all right I, 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 I fingers crossed it's gone the right way have you really made an effort to lose some weight like you've been promising yourself for the last three or four years, but you've decided that you're really going to do it this time? So how's that gone? Have oh, I bollocks? <laughs> I know. Um, this is, what, did I, what did I have for tea last night? This is how... Oh, God. So for tea last night, I had three um, uh, salt and vinegar rice cakes and a bowl of microwave risotto dried <laughs> microwave risotto my insides feel rank today that I, that i think answers that question no i haven't no i haven't but i have um stopped smoking which is by accident i stopped smoking by accident um because i've had a uh, an injury to my knee uh, it's been ongoing for a while and it's been getting worse and worse and 
Um, I've I had to take some very strong painkillers for it, and I still have to take them uh, now, but I try not to because it's a particularly strong painkiller that doesn't make... You don't feel great after it. It's one of those ones where people go, oh, it's great, it's tramadol, basically. And people go, oh, yeah, you get a great high effect. Yeah, you do the first time you take it, but then you've got to take it three times a day, every day, and then it stops being fun. And so I tried stopping taking it, but then there's just pain, and then... Because I, I don't smoke in the house, I'd have to go downstairs, and then you go downstairs, and and it hurts. Got like there were times I was going up the stairs on all fours because it was so painful, and and I've I've got like a little vapor, so I was using uh, my ace my asig in, in the very room I'm sat in now, and just using more and more and putting off going for a cigarette. Then I realized I'd gone for a full day without, and then the next day I'd gone for ages without that, and it just sort of kept going from that really. Um, and may, maybe like because I'm not I'm not going to say I've quit. No, I'm I haven't quit. I've tried. I'm tr- I'm leaving big gaps between fags, very big gaps between cigarettes. That's what I'm doing. And the gap at the minute is about three weeks. So I'll probably have one after this. Well, I think we both know that you are not going to really make an effort. Has your knee fixed itself yet, or is it arthritis as you've suspected all along? <laughs> no, it's not arthritis. It's the meniscus. Uh, it's not fixed itself yet. It. Oh God, was I whinging about this a year ago? Jesus, Barry, stop talking about it. Everybody must be bored of this. Everyone must be bored of hearing me talk about this. Um, no, it's not fixed itself, and no, it's not arthritis. It probably will lead to arthritis, but yeah. <sighs> Why did you think it would fix itself? You know that you can't just leave these things. They don't. They don't fix themselves. Has anything life-changing happened in the last 12 months? I think something life-changing sort of happens like every, every day now. I'm sort of, I'm, I'm really interested in this sort of butterfly effect thing. And I tell, I tell you what's made me think about that is um, I got a game called Red Dead Redemption 2 and I went past this bloke and he had um, he'd been bitten by a snake and I had to suck the poison out. And I did it, and he was like all really thankful and everything. And then I went to like talk to him. There's a bu- button that you hold to talk, and you can interact with him. And I was sort of going to be like, "Oh, can I, have, can I have some money for helping you out?" So I tried to talk to him. But I didn't realize I had my gun out, and that button also fires the gun. So he was being all thankful. I was like, "All right, give us some money." In the end, I just blew his head off. Um, so, I, but I, so I think that's going to make my game more difficult now because I reckon he was important. So yeah, ev- every every day you do something important. I think every day is something important. And, uh, yeah, the horse isn't looking healthy either. I was thinking about that this morning. You've got to brush the horse. And, uh, yeah, as soon as I've done this, I'm going to go and pay some more attention to the captain, as he's called. So, uh, yeah, something important happens every day. Did that garage that you took the car to turn out to be trustworthy or were they just like all the rest and definitely, definitely dodgy, even though they're slightly cheaper? Is it, Was it worth it? definitely dodgy definitely definitely if there's one thing i've learned in 12 months never trust a garage um no that's it never trust a garage never trust a garage they're all in it together they all sort their prices together now, I've, I've, I've i got finance on a new car and yes they yeah they were shysters i should probably name and shame them on this actually yeah sp- cunts well, unfortunately, time travel doesn't really work or exist yet, so there's nothing I can do about that. So I've made a massive error. Cheers. Have you relaxed about letting the cat out yet, or are you still panicking about letting a cat out into the garden? Yeah, that's still happening. I tried, um, I, I let her out on a lead. So she goes out on the lead and goes, and like, um, but she gets frustrated because she sees like birds and things like that, and she like cackles at them because she wants to like attack them. And I think she's cackling. I don't know if it's frustration or if she's excited or if she's laughing or I don't know what she's doing. But it's this like weird cat noise. So yeah, I put her on the lead. She does that. But I, I was up at um, what time was I up at this morning? I was up at three a.m. and um, I was on Red Dead Redemption again. I was playing that. I think I just killed the bloke with a snake. And I thought, oh, I'll let the cat out for a bit. And God, what a nightmare getting her in. I was out at quarter to four this morning. In um, well, I ended up doing it in my boxer shorts because I went out and I tried chasing her once to get her in and she ran away. 
and I was like using my laser pen and everything, trying to like trick her into the house. And then they're going through the grass, and my tracky bottoms got wet, so I had to take them off because I didn't want to drag water in the house. And and then in the end, I saw her, so I thought, oh, I can't miss this opportunity to go out and get her. So I just ran out in my boxer shorts, boxer shorts and a hoodie, um, trying to get a cat in while waving a laser pen about. It was like the shittest Jean Michel Jarre concert you've ever seen in your life. It was ridiculous. Neighbours probably hate me. So no, yeah, no, she's um, yeah, she's she's still not got freedom. <laughs> so why why are you worried? What is it that you're worried about? Is it the same as now? Is it that you're worried that you sh- you know she's going to get attacked? She's going to get lost? She's going to get hit by a car? Because she's not an intelligent cat, so she will be straight under the first thing that she sees. Has your steelbook collection gone up in value? And by that, you know what you mean. Um, no, it's gone down in value. I, I, I don't know what you mean by it because I've had to sell some of it. <laughs> I've sold some of it because I wanted to get um, an Xbox One X. So I got that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm a bit gutted about that, to be honest. <laughs> I, just, I don't want to talk about it because I sold one that I really, really liked. It, it went for good money, but oh, I wish I still had it. Um, so... A steel book. It's a. It's basically. It's film companies who've they've 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 made loads of Blu-rays of like the thing or something like that, and everyone's buying them and they they think they're great and they go well why don't we just buy a bit of new packaging make it out of metal, print the cover on the metal and then stick a fiver on the price, and see if people buy it and it sounds like a stupid idea because what idiot would do that and uh yeah me. <laughs> bit of metal packaging extra fiber tell me it's collectible bang it'll be on my shelf within the week um uh and some, some of them are rare some of them are hard to get some of them are t- tough to get hold of but uh yeah i had to sell one texas chainsaw massacre signed by gunner hansen the late gunner hansen who was leatherface um that's gone now that's in china now that's mad that why are you saying cryptic things because you know that you won't remember any of this so now you are listening to this, struggling, trying to think what you meant. Have you confessed to your friend Damien yet about what you did? Um, yeah, there's been lots of other things recently with him. Yeah, I've got a weird relationship with Damien. Um, me and Damien fall out on a regular basis. We fall out about weird things as well. We fall out about Mount Everest a lot because he claims that he's been up Mount Everest. And he clearly hasn't. He hasn't. If you'd seen him, he's a... N- nearly 50 year old wreck of a man but he used to be a stockbroker he used to be on that working lunch program on channel two i used to watch that when i was like on dinner from school he used to pop up on that going oh yeah buy shares in tesco's and now he's a he's a promoter he says he's a comedian he's not he's a promoter you could you're not a comedian if you just don't um, see your own gigs yeah and he sort of um yeah he told me once that him and a load of stockbrokers clown climbed everest and he hasn't and it really winds me up that he says that he has because he clearly hasn't. I wish I could show... If you're listening to this now, stop it. Google Damien Larkin. Have a look at him. Do you reckon he's climbed Everest? Because I can tell you now he hasn't. He's And every now and again in a conversation, you'll slip in, like, oh, the time I met a Sherpa and things like that. It's like, oh, piss off, mate. I can't remember what the question was, but, yeah, I've fallen out with him a lot. <laughs> I mean, the things I've done to Damien over the years... There was a friend of mine that he really fancied once, and he... Um, and he asked me to... This This might be it, actually. Oh, no! No, 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 no. Oh, God, I remembered. I've signed him up to loads of uh, mailing lists for a laugh of um, pie suppliers and put his phone number on as well, saying, please get in touch about an urgent order. So he's he's getting tons of phone calls from, like, um, <laughs> like Holland's Pies and people like that, saying, I oh, we're ringing up about the pies. And he's going mental because he, he's not a slim man. And neither am I. He calls me fat and he winds me up about being fat all the time. So I wind him up about being fat all the time. And we've, just, we've just got that sort of relationship. Yeah, so he was getting phone calls from, um, yeah, people about pies <laughs> and going mad about it. Um, what, was the, what was the other thing? Oh, I sent him a load of gay porn as well. Really, really, ha- like the stronger stuff as well. Not not your not your vanilla stuff. This was this was full on gay porn. Yeah, just like no no like mood lighting, no nice camera angles, no nice music underneath. This this was just blokes shagging, blokes shagging blokes. Just as gay as you can get, blokes shagging blokes. And you know what? They were having a great time. So good on them. Well, I had to see some of it, obviously. 
it, you know, it didn't do anything for us. <laughs> Damien, I don't think, had a great time with the video, though. Well, at least you've come clean, and at least at least your pals for now until he winds you up again or you wind him up again. What is the stupidest thing you have done in the last twelve months? What's the st- oh stupidest thing I've done in the last twelve months? I forget. I really, really forget. There's there's so many people in my life who can who can probably tell me something really stupid that I did yesterday, and I, I can't remember. Some, I don't know. I, sometimes I just don't think. Sometimes I just plow on when everyone else can see that I should stop. That like um, I did a gig the other night, and there was somebody, and he was a very manly man, and I was comparing the gig, and I was like, "Look at you, you're a very manly man." He went, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, I've heard, I've heard around here," and I went, "Oh yeah, what do you do?" I went, "Oh, I do do bits and bobs." I was going, oh, look at you, so manly, like, oh, yeah. I said, you even sound like a man should sound. And he was like, oh, yeah. And then his wife was, like, looking at me, like, shaking her head. And I was like, oh, is he not a manly man? Oh, is he not a manly man? Like, oh, man, she's like, he, fuck it, he had had throat cancer. So, yeah. Should have seen the warning signs, but no. Keep ploughing in, calling him a manly man. Well done, Barry. And that was that, and that was only this week. So God knows what's happened in twelve months. I, th- I think yeah, I think I've just got to shut it all out because otherwise I'd, I'd hide under a stone <laughs> in pure shame. Have you managed to do anything clever at all in the last twelve months? No. Have you had a brush with death at any point? I think I sort of did. Um, I was driving back after a gig in Birmingham, and I've sort of um. Again, maybe this is the butterfly thing about just thinking one tiny little thing changes everything. Something massive happens every day. And I got stuck in some traffic and I was coming out of Birmingham and I my sat nav, I'd bought one of these ones where it tells you a quicker way to go. Now, normally I would have just sat in that traffic and just, you know, wait to get through. But this one was like, oh, no, if you go down this street and go down here. And so it took me a different way and... And of course, everybody's been frustrated in this traffic and there's all these sort of tunnels that you go through when you get out of Birmingham. And I was going through one and two cars were racing each other and they overtook me in the tunnel. Now, the, the speed limit in the tunnels, I think 30 or 40 mile an hour. Um, they were easily doing about 110, 120. They went past me so fast. The first one in particular went so fast that the pressure wave nearly pushed me into the wall. And... I really thought that the second one was going to hit me because the first one was so jarring. And there's something happening. There was something in the news not too long ago about something happening in one of those tunnels. There was um, a few deaths involved and it was horrible. And it went through my mind at the time and it happened. And yeah, I, I thought I thought I was done for there. And mm. But then I just think if I hadn't bought that sat nav, I'd have still just sat in the traffic and I wouldn't have been an, in that tunnel at that time. So maybe it's all, maybe it's all about being... Maybe you die when you're meant to die. Maybe I just wasn't wasn't meant to, or who knows? Maybe if I stayed in that traffic, a, another car might have done it because everyone's frustrated and puts their foot down. I don't know, but yeah, yeah, that 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 was close. That 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 felt very close, and it's it's made me re it's made me more nervous about driving. What is the spookiest story that anyone has told you in the last year? Oh, in the last year, uh, I don't know. That's really hard. The spookiest story. I can't think in the last year. I remember the last time somebody told me a really, really scary one. And, it, um, yeah, it nearly, if I, like, sometimes when I get, like, like really big waves of emotion, I can't help but tears just start coming out of my eyes because like, I get overwhelmed by emotion. And, and it could be happiness, could be sadness, could be surprise. I just, I've got a mate called Dave who does it as well. And, you know, and it, he's, he's, he's not like, like me. He's a proper bloke and he gets it as well. Yeah. Somebody told me a story, I was around at my agent's house and he said that some, a friend of his missus, his missus works in hospital and a friend of hers was driving home after, after doing a shift and she was driving back home and she was on this country road and there was this, uh, there was a pram in the middle of the road and she was like, shit, and she hit the brakes and she got out, went and had a look and this pram had nothing in it she was like, oh, that's weird, so she kicked it and pushed it out the way of the road she got back in the car then another car came tearing along behind just out of nowhere chasing after her she said shit 
put a foot down this car's fucking beeping its own flashing its lights and it's bumper to bumper with her she's terrified screamed into her driveway it followed her all the way home got into her drive ran out the car screaming her husband came out was like what's going on the car behind the bloke got out and ran for her and he said i'm not chasing you somebody's in the back of your car and um when she'd been stopped looking at the pram somebody had got in the back somebody in the back of the car i don't know I, I, that's where the st- that's where the st- i think I, I, yeah i started crying at that point all the tears started happening but yeah yeah just so, somebody had got in the back of the car i don't know if they're going to rob her or whatever they were going to do with her but it was a trick she she gets out the car and obviously leaves the door open and yeah somebody jumped in the in the back seats i think i think he got arrested i don't know what his intentions were i'd, I'd have to i'd, I'd, I'd have to ring lee and uh, find out <laughs> you say I've, I've got all I need from that story. <laughs> What's the funniest joke you've heard in the last year? Oh, the funniest joke I've heard in the last year. Um, I can't really. I can't. That's a really hard question to ask somebody who works in comedy because you never hear a, a joke that really makes you laugh. Because I, I think you may be desensitised a little bit to comedy because you just see it all the time. And I think that's why comics green room jokes are so extreme either in terms of taste or offence and decency. It's because you've got to go to those levels to get a reaction. So any of the jokes that I've probably been told in the last year would be completely unrepeatable. Be it, they, they would certainly tick every box in guaranteeing that you would never work in comedy again if they ever went public. What would... What would oh. I, I, I can't, I, I honestly can't think of the, oh, no, mine's blank, I, I don't, maybe, I've either not heard one, or there's one that I can't, <laughs> that I probably can't tell. I can't, my favourite joke that I've written this year, I don't sort of write jokes, I sort of write stories, and that every now and again I'll write like a little, you know, two-liner or like a little bit, I can't think, Um, yeah, I've, I think I wrote a, the, the, there was a story from my past that really that I that I find really funny looking back at it about when me and my friend joined a snooker club and the snooker club was not as it seems we were very very skint we were very very stupid and we joined um, a very dodgy club to play pool in because it was free pool the club I won't say what it was but you'd never guess You'd never guess what it was. Come and see me do stand up and find out. See if I had the balls to tell the story. But it's it, it it's really, um, I don't know. It, I'm really shy about telling it because I'm because I'm not bothered. It's a bit embarrassing, but I think my friend might get a bit up to you like, oh, why are you telling that story? It, which I think is one of the problems when you sort of tell true life stories. You either have got to lie and edit people out, or you just um, embellish your makeup, but then you're not telling true stories and you're just lying to yourself as well as an audience, and that's a bit dull. Um, yeah. Sorry, that's a rubbish answer to that one. Sorry, past Barry. <laughs> what was the point in any of that? That was a waste of your time. And that was a waste of everyone's time. That was pointless. That was crap. Has anything made you cry in the last year? Yeah, that story about the um, man in the car and the woman in the pram. Has anything made me cry in the last year? Something did the other night. I was feeling a, a proper low. Yeah, the last thing that got me... I was away, I was in a hotel and I was on my own and I don't know what it was, I'd had very little sort of interaction with other people and the room wasn't great, I couldn't even get fresh air in, it was on those hotels that's so grim they don't let you open the windows in case you kill yourself, it's like one of them ones, you know, and like even the kettle flex isn't long enough for you to hang yourself because they know that if you're staying in one of these places there's a good chance you're going to off yourself and they don't care about you, they just can't be off cleaning. Um it's yeah and i was sort of on my own and i think i was watching um youtube videos and it was um uh a little respect obviously comes up a lot of mine because i'm a huge erasure fan and there was um a church version of it with a choir singing of it now a little respect i think most people know that erasure song and it's sort of it's a great song that you can sing along to i think everyone knows the words to it and it's yeah it feels upbeat but the song's a sad song it's not a happy song it's um it's you know sort of about feeling not respected and and things like that and and then 
I heard a version of it and it was done with a church choir and it they'd made it sad. And I don't know, and it caught me at a low mood and I heard it and, yeah, I just had tears coming down my face. So, God, yeah, so an erasure song made us cry. Yeah, Jesus, Barry. <laughs> I wish I hadn't answered that now, but that's the honest answer anyway. Did you manage to blag it or did Simon Kane work out that you really struggled to think of these questions? Um, I think he knew. I, I think he knew. I think Simon knows me well enough to know that pre-planning and thought is not a strong point of mine. Um, the last time I saw Simon was at a Parapod live show. Um, and, yeah, you could tell that some of that content, bearing in mind, it was written on hotel paper of that hotel room where I was depressed, <laughs> crying at Erasia. It was some of the content for that show was written on the note paper from that room. Um, so, yeah, pre-planning is not something that I do um, very well at all. I try to. I, I, I like to feel like, like I am, but I think he saw right through me, if I'm perfectly honest. He's a clever bloke, and uh, nah, there's no way I pulled the wool over his eyes. Well, maybe next time we should do actually do a bit more prep and plan properly for this. But in reality, we both know we won't do that. Did you say yes to doing anything in the last year that you really wish you hadn't done? Oh, you see, that's weird because I think you do that as a... I think you do it as a comic because I think you sort of... I think you speculate to accumulate a little bit in comedy. I think you... I think you sometimes do gigs that sort of aren't worth you doing, but you think, I'll do it because I want to be in with them because I, I want to go and do those things and be part of them. And uh, Yeah, I, I did one gig in particular to try and get in with a promoter and it was on a night where I really wasn't... It was a long drive as well. It was about three and a half hours. Yeah, it was a long one, that. It was a long way to go for crap money, and it was utterly pointless. And I think I knew at the time it was pointless, and I still went and did it. And I, I thought, I'd, I wish I'd put a bit more value on myself and my time. And it's like, if they wanted to boot me, they would. I'm, I'm not a new act, you know, they can... Yeah, I, I, th I think I jumped through hoops that I shouldn't... I'm not saying I shouldn't have to ju jump through hoops, because, uh, you know, if, if you want these things, you've got to play the game, but... I, I, I don't think I, I, sh I should have because it was pointless. Pointless for me and pointless for them. So, yeah, I wish I'd said no to that. Did you say no to anything that you really wish you'd said yes to? Oh, um, yeah, when I was in Cardiff, this bloke hassled us to go and have a go on this VR machine. It was, um, yeah, it looked really, really good. And I said no because I thought it was like a scam for like a tenner. And it looks really, really good. And I wish I'd had a go of it now. And that's, I, th I think I really want to embrace... I, I, I like to think that I'm up with technology and things like that. And, you know, I, you know, I, use, uh, I use a Mac, whereas I've always been a PC user. But I thought, no, push yourself to something new. And, you know, I use, um, you know, iPhones and iPads. And I try to stay up to speed with them uh, in terms of my gaming, my console gaming. I always try to have a latest a latest console and and latest games although that's stopping now i'm getting a bit older um so i like to feel like i'm i'd, I'd hate to be that sort of 1950s bloke who gets to like 40 and then gives up on technology and then 10 years down the line going oh i don't know what a bloody ipod is and all that yeah i don't want to be one of those people i want to be up to date and yeah this this there was this shop and everybody in there had VR headsets on and they were all sort of playing and like fighting each other but like in like an imaginary world and and it, it was it was so weird watching it and I wish I'd had a go because maybe that is like if the future of entertainment maybe like VR and I had it on the PlayStation and it sort of works but you know you do that in your living room you end up walking into the fire and stuff like that so I think you've, um, but yeah, it looks really interesting. And it was weird because some of them must have been playing fighting games and they had headsets on and they were holding these little paddles and they were proper swinging. And it's like, if you just turned them each 90 degrees, they'd be having this fight for real. It was so odd. It's like, like make, yeah, punch him without pain. Maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's the way things will go. Maybe it could be a way of sport now. Maybe sport will become a bit more virtual. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I wish I'd said yes. I wish I'd had a go and sort of didn't look at VR and go, oh no, that's bloody too complex for me. I wish I, I wish I'd, yeah, embraced the technology and at least found out what it was about. Right, I'll make sure that I try that then, so I don't miss out like you have. <laughs>
if you could go back and speak to past you and tell yourself a year ago a bit of advice, what would it be? Don't move. Stay in the house you're in. Don't move. You you think you're doing the right thing. You're not. You, you, you've met one set of neighbours. They're great. You haven't met the other ones. Don't just presume. Don't move. All right, fine. I won't move. All right, fine. 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 I will, I will not make your mistakes. Which gig has made you happiest this year or given you the best memory this year? Best gig, best memory. Um... You see, it's weird because I've seen so many memorable gigs in, in 12 months and as everybody has who works in comedy, there's always memorable gigs. Um, in terms of ones that would stand out, I I saw a, a very well-respected Canadian comic who's uh, who's been on TV and things like that and he, he's very, very good and he's, he's quite a cool act as well. Um, you know, everybody sort of wants to be his friend and you can't imagine anything in the world would faze him and I saw him at a gig and some girls would not stop talking and and it, he had a breaking point which I didn't think he had and yeah, I know I watched him reach that breaking point and oh, it was brutal when he let rip so yeah, that that was quite memorable um, for me uh, you see, sometimes a lot of gigs just blur into one and and I've done some odd gigs this year. I've done some really odd gigs this year. But probably the one that stands out would would be the Parapod Live, the the one that I did a few um a few weeks ago. Just because it's it's weird because the first time we did a Parapod Live, it's it was a surprise because it was going to be me and Ian just doing stand up each, and then we we did an audience vote and they voted for us to do the podcast live which of course we did and and it and it went well and it was it was great but with this this one it was announced as the podcast so people knew what we were going to be doing and maybe it missed a, a, a spark because of that and it it, it didn't so I, I know that was my cat jump for there that you just heard she, she's gone for the post woman she, she knows when the post lady's coming um so, so yeah, it it just sort of slightly didn't have that 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 feel that the first one did, but at the same time, you know, it it had its moments and it had bits that people will really remember, and it was fun to do. But I think maybe the biggest part of that is it it sort of seeing everyone. It sort of, it, it felt like a, a year catch up, like like a yearly sort of checking in with everyone and. Of course, everybody knows each other from Twitter because they tweet to each other and they do things through Ian's Patreon where they talk to each other and and through his radio show. So everybody sort of knows everybody, and and it's like a chance for people to meet people. Um. So it and and it's odd. So it it's like it's like we're we're just like the catalyst for it, and then these people all get together and um yeah become friends and drink and and have a laugh. So so yeah th- yeah that's probably got to be it. I can't imagine gushing about another gig like that in 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 that way. So yeah, yeah, let's let's go for let's go for the parapod. All right, thanks, future Barry, for answering these questions. Um, I hope they weren't too difficult for you. They weren't too difficult for you because you wrote them for you for me. Thanks, past Barry. Um, no, they weren't very difficult, and yeah, yeah, fun, but. I've, this has been a great reminder of why I don't listen to anything with me on it because my voice is horrible. Past Barry, you are a. F- I would not be friends with you because you sound like hard work. That was Barry. I'm gutted the film isn't out yet, if I'm honest with you. I've been really looking forward to that, but all good things are worth the wait. We were originally going to do the answer recordings at the Parapod Live gig, but he got so nervous and anxious we had to push it back slightly, and again, I really feel like it was worth the wait. I really, really enjoyed hearing how his mind works and the way that his perspective is shaped by the things immediately around him, and it was really great, really honestly exciting for me, and I can't wait to hear what Future Projects comes out with him, and... And I'm, I don't know if I should spoil this, I'm I'm, talk, I'm tentatively talking to him about a project that I'm working on. So hopefully that will come true this year. We'll see. 
this sadly, even though it's the start of the new year, the end of series one of the podcast. I know my episode was the last one of last year, and it would have made sense to end the series on that. However, my episode was supposed to be a bonus episode for series one, and uh, Barry wanted this episode out in January. So who am I to deny my friend what they like? So um, I basically switched them around, and that's why his is out this year. But uh, we won't be having a long break, so series one is over for now, and uh, series two will be out in about three to two, three months time. I'm sort of, I'm scheduling in the guests at the moment. So with any luck, it will be out at the end of March, but I don't want to, don't want to intimate things and then have it out too late. So uh, it will be out this year, let's put it that way. But uh, when this year? When this year? It's all relative, isn't it, with time? Um, I, I'll, t- I'll, I'll, te- I'll tease some of the guests that are coming on. That might help. We've got musician Amanda Palmer and Felix Hagen. We've got comedians Rufus Hound, Josie Long, and scientist Richard Wiseman. That's just a few of the guests coming on. There'll be another 24 episodes, plus a bonus one out this year. So please do remember to subscribe and tell people about the show. If you're enjoying this work and you'd like to support me and the project and all the time, work and effort that goes into it, please do consider giving us an honest, positive review in iTunes. Or you can give us a donation, either as a one-off via PayPal on my website, which is simonkane.co.uk, or as a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash audio time capsule podcast. All of the links are in the show notes. I'd love to get some patrons on there ahead of series two. So if you can support the show from $1 an episode, please do. As always, thank you very much for all the support. It's massively appreciated. I can't really thank you enough for doing it. And if you can't do any of the above or you've already done it and you'd like to do something else, please tell some friends about the show that you think will enjoy it. It really helps with the download numbers, which helps get some bigger guests. I have no budget for the show, so all of it's done on word of mouth. So thank you immensely for all the work and hard work you put in for that. Or what you could do if you really want to is you could just send me or one of the guests a tweet to thank them or me. I'm at This Made Me Cool and all of the guests' Twitter handles are in their show notes. So go and check that out. It really means a lot and I I genuinely can't thank you enough. This has been a a really, really interesting experiment and I'm really excited to be doing series two. The Audio Time Capsule is a fruit that got in Gravity's Way production for the internet. All elements were created by me, comedian Simon Kane. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for subscribing. And thank you very much for rating and donating if you do. I'll see you all in about 14... No, I won't. No, I won't. I'll see you all in about two months' time. Bye for now.